5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Thursday, June 3, 2021. BBC report. Pakistan overturns Christian couples blasphemy death sentences. Shagufta Kauser and her husband Shafkat Emanuel were convicted in 2014 for insulting the Prophet Muhammad. But on Thursday, the couple's lawyer Saif al Maluk said the Lahore High Court had acquitted them. A prosecution lawyer told the Reuters news agency that the latest ruling would be challenged. Blasphemy is punishable by death in Pakistan, and though no one has ever been executed for it, dozens have been killed by mobs after being accused. Al Jazeera report. France halts joint army operations with Malian forces over coup. In its strongest reaction yet to last week's coup in Mali, France has said it will suspend its joint military operations with Malian forces, awaiting guarantees that civilians return to positions of power. Malian soldiers on May 25 detained interim president Ba Nda and prime minister Mokhtar Wan and stripped them of their powers after a dispute over a cabinet reshuffle plunging the country into further uncertainty after a military coup in August last year. CNN report. Air France flight evacuated after anonymous threat. Passengers on an Air France flight were evacuated in Paris on Thursday after an anonymous threat, the company said in a statement. The AF-865 flight from Chad's capital in Jemena landed at Charles de Gaulle Airport after it was escorted by a French Air Force fighter plane. As a result of the anonymous threat, Air France said, Several hours after the incident, the French interior miniser Gerald Darmanin said that fears an explosive device might be on board proved to be false. Fox report. Florida boy, 12, charged with attempted murder after shootout with deputies, appears in court. A 12-year-old boy accused of escaping from a Florida juvenile facility and breaking into a home before engaging in a shootout with Volusia County Sheriff's deputies made his first court appearance Thursday. A judge ordered him to be placed in secure detention for 21 days. The boy, who appeared via Zoom and spoke softly when addressed, was assigned a public defender, Fox 25 Orlando reported. His arraignment is scheduled on June 23 at half past 10 a. Al Jazeera report. Turkey's lira hits new low as investors lose faith. Turkey's lira settled at its weakest level yet on Thursday, worth 8.7 to the dollar after strong United States jobs data accelerated a three-month slide in which investors lost faith in authorities' ability to rein in double-digit inflation. The lira, by far emerging markets laggard this year, was at 8.705 at 19 minutes past 17 GMT, a record low closing price. Its 1% skid gathered speed when the dollar and U.S. yields jumped after stronger than expected U.S. payrolls data. Fox report. Billionaire Lord Michael Ashcroft reportedly paid for Belize Police Jim. British billionaire Lord Michael Ashcroft, whose son's longtime partner Jasmine Hartin is charged in the shooting death of a top Belize cop, reportedly paid for a police gym and jail on the island. He was photographed in February cutting the ribbon on the brand new gym, for which he shelled out $135,000, at the main police headquarters, the Daily Mail reported. At the event, Ashcroft, 75, whose net worth is estimated at about $2 billion, said his interest in law and order dated back to 1988, when he formed and became chairman of the United Kingdom Crime Stoppers Organization, according to the outlet. Deutsche Well Report. SpaceX rocket takes baby bobtail squids to ISS. For the first time ever, bobtail squids made it into space on Thursday. They were traveling toward the International Space Station, ISS aboard a NASA resupply mission. The space agency sent two boxes with the freshly hatched squids, also known as Euprimna scolopes, to help astronauts study the effects of low gravity on the relationship between the animals and their symbiotic bacteria. Animals, including humans, rely on our microbes to maintain a healthy digestive and immune system, said lead investigator Jamie Foster from the University of Florida. Deutsche Well Report. Coronavirus. U.S. announces vaccine donations boost. The U.S. will donate 75% of its unused coronavirus vaccines to the COVAX Alliance, President Joe Biden announced on Thursday. Overall, the White House aims to share 80 million doses globally by the end of June. As long as this pandemic is raging anywhere in the world, the American people will still be vulnerable, Biden said in a statement. And the United States is committed to bringing the same urgency to international vaccination efforts that we have demonstrated at home.
BBC report. Utah girls aged four and nine drive car to swim in the ocean. The sisters told officers they were heading to California because they wanted to swim in the ocean. They drove on two major roads, hit another car and then crashed head-on into a lorry, police said on Twitter. The sisters were both wearing their seatbelts and were not hurt. Utah's West Valley City Police Department said the girls woke up at about 3 a.m. on Wednesday and took the Chevy Malibu while their parents were sleeping in their West Jordan home. BBC report. Coronavirus. First cruise ship arrives in Venice since pandemic began. The MSC Orchestra is due to pick up about 650 passengers on Saturday for a Mediterranean voyage. All of them must produce negative COVID tests before they are allowed to board. But environmental protesters are planning a rally, saying cruise ships are eroding the foundations of the historic Italian city. A rival demonstration is also expected on Saturday in support of the resumption of the tourist season. Fox report. Mexico sinkhole photos show house on edge of colossal crater. The earth has swallowed about 70,000 square feet of Mexican farmland. A sinkhole measuring about 300 feet in diameter opened in the state of Puebla on Saturday, in Santa Maria Zacatepec, according to local reports. The massive cavity grew after appearing initially about 15 feet across, and has expanded rapidly since, said Puebla's environmental secretary, Beatriz Manrique. State civil engineers and various other agencies have visited the site since last weekend. Fox report. Famed criminal attorney F. Lee Bailey who represented O.J. Simpson, dead at age 87, reports High-profile criminal defense attorney F. Lee Bailey, who famously represented O.J. Simpson in his 1995 trial, has died, the former NFL star announced on Twitter Thursday. Superior Court Judge Kenneth J. Fishman, Bailey's former partner, confirmed the news to the Boston Globe. Bailey was 87 and died in Georgia, according to the Globe. Though the cause of his death was not immediately specified, Bailey served as one of Simpson's attorneys during the former running back's 1995 trial, which ended in his acquittal in the 1994 murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ronald Goldman. Deutsche Well report. Coronavirus. WHO warns Africa. Not ready for third wave. The World Health Organization. WHO, on Thursday warned that the threat of a third wave of coronavirus hitting Africa is real and rising. A senior official from the Geneva-based UN body urged governments across the continent to urgently expand their facilities so that their healthcare systems do not become overwhelmed. WHO Africa director Matt Shidiso Moti has urged African governments to prepare for the real and rising threat of a third wave. A WHO survey carried out last month showed most African countries have less than one intensive care unit bed per 100,000 people. CNN report. It's shameful. Massacre survivors lawyers demand Tulsa be the next city to pay reparations. Two years after the Tulsa massacre left some 300 black people dead and a once booming neighborhood destroyed, another white mob attacked a black enclave in Florida. The incident, known as the Rosewood Massacre, would end with at least eight casualties, six black people and two white people. Historians say the violence erupted after a white woman claimed she was assaulted by a black man. Similar to Tulsa, the community was decimated and many survivors left and never returned. CNN report. Eight high school football coaches suspended over allegations they made a Hebrew Israelite player eat a pizza that had contained pork. Eight high school football coaches in Canton, Ohio, have been suspended while police investigate allegations that they forced a Hebrew Israelite player to eat a pizza that previously had pork on it, despite knowing his beliefs forbade him from eating it police and the student's lawyer told CNN. The 17-year-old student, who hasn't been named, is a rising senior at Canton McKinley High School, where he was an offensive lineman on the football team. CNN report. Five arrested after 14-year-old girl gang raped in Belgium. An investigation into the alleged gang rape of a 14-year-old girl in Ghent, Belgium is underway after five people, including three minors, were arrested according to public prosecutors and local media reports. The young girl killed herself four days after the attack, which took place on May 14, East Flanders Public Prosecutor's Office told CNN. CNN affiliate news outlet RTL Info reported the girl was raped in Westerbegraplatz Cemetery in Ghent, after arranging to meet with a friend. Al Jazeera report. 
U.S. jobless claims fall below 400,000 while private payrolls spike. The number of Americans filing new claims for unemployment benefits dropped below 400,000 last week for the first time since the coronavirus pandemic started more than a year ago, the United States Department of Labor, Dahl, said on Thursday. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits totaled 385,000 for the week ended May 29, compared to 405,000 the prior week. The decline in new claims, down by nearly half since early April, shows that layoffs are receding, while the more stubborn level of continuing claims reminds us that a full recovery of jobs lost during the pandemic will be a more uneven process, Nancy von den Houten and Gregory Deco, economists at Oxford Economics, said in a Thursday note. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell.